So, okay. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vara Dhari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vara Dhari Yasho Danandana Vraja Janaranjana Yasho Danandana Vraja Janaranjana Yamunati Ravanachari Yamunati Ravanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, um, again, for those who weren't here, we're actually reading from text 13. Um, but since text 15 is on the board, we'll just read text 15. Um, we'll, we'll chant it. Tadeva Tasman Ninado Tibhishano Babhuva Yenanda Kataham Asputat Yam Vai Sva Dishnyo Pagatam Tu Ajadaya Shrutva Sva Dhamma Tayam Anga Menire Tadaiva Tasmin in a doti Bishano Babhuva ye Nandakata Hamas Putat Yam Vaiswadishno Bagatam Tadjadaya Shrutvas for Dhamma Tia Mangamani Day. The day but a smin in a doti bishano. Babhu Babye Nandakata Hamas putat. Yam vase for the shnyo bagatam to jadaya. Shrutvas for Dhamma Tayamanga Mani Day Tadeva Tasmin in a doti Bishano Babhuva ye Nandakata Hamas Putat 
यम वै स्वदृष्ण्यो पगतम त्वजादय श्रुवा सधामे निरे Okay, so I'll just read text 13 myself and then we can just do the word for words translation and purport for that verse. Can I try? Yes, Prabhu. Tadaiva tashmi nyada tivishana Tadaiva tashmi nyada tivishana Bahuva inanda kataham asputat Bahuva inanda kataham asputat Yambaisha dishna pagatam tabu ajadaya Sudva shadham shadhamatam angamenide सोहम विकथम से शिखा धरा ते गोपाएत हृस्वाद्य यस्ते शरणमीपत सह हि अहम आय विकथम से हु आर स्पीकिंग सच नॉन्स शिर द हेड कायात from the body harami i shall take away te a view gopayeta let him protect hari hi the supreme personality of godhead twa you adya now yaha he who te your sharanam protector ipsatam desired translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri labhupad again i'm going to read until text 17 all the verses and purports are pretty much uh the same until then and text 17 is when um lord narsimha dev appears so we'll just read till there translation because you are speaking so much nonsense i shall now sever your head from your body Now let me see your most worshipable god come to protect you. I want to see it. Purport. Demons always think that the god of the devotees is fictitious. They think that there is no god and that the so-called religious feeling of devotion to god is but an opiate, a kind of illusion, like the illusions derived from LSD and opium. Hiranyakashipu did not believe Prahlad Maharaj when Prahlad Maharaj asserted that his lord is present everywhere. Because Hiranyakashipu as a typical demon was convinced that there is no god and that no one could protect Prahlad he felt encouraged to kill his son he challenged the idea that the devotee is always protected by the supreme lord text 14 being obsessed with anger Hiranyakashipu who was very great in bodily strength thus chastised his exalted devotee's son Prahlad with harsh words Cursing him again and again, Hiranyakashipu took up his sword, got up from his royal throne, and with great anger struck his fist against the column. 
Then from within the pillar came a fearful sound, which appeared to crack the covering of the universe. O oh, my dear Yudhishthir, this sound reached even the abodes of the demigods, like Lord Brahma. And when the demigods heard it, they thought, oh, now our planets are being destroyed. Purport. As we sometimes become very much afraid at the sound of a thunderbolt, perhaps thinking that our houses will be destroyed, the great demigods like Lord Brahma feared the thundering sound that came from the pillar in front of Hiranyakashipu. Text 16. While showing his extraordinary prowess, Hiranyakashipu, who desired to kill his own son, heard that wonderful tumultuous, tumultuous sound which had never before been heard. Upon hearing the sound, the other leaders of the demons were afraid. None of them could find the origin of that sound in the assembly. Purport. In Bhagavad Gita 7.8, Krishna explains himself by saying, Raso ham apsukondaya prabhasmi shashi surya yaha. Pranava sarvave deshu shabdake paurusham nashu. O son of Kunti, Arjuna, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. I am the sound and ether and the ability in man. Here the Lord exhibited his presence everywhere by the tumultuous sound in the sky, Shabda K. The tumultuous thundering sound was proof of the Lord's presence. The demons like Hiranyakashipu could now realize the supreme ruling power of the Lord, and thus Hiranyakashipu became afraid. However powerful a man may be, he always fears the sound of a thunderbolt. Similarly, Hiranyakashipu and all the demons who were his associates were extremely afraid because of the presence of the Supreme Lord in the form of sound, although they could not trace out the source of the sound. And so this is the uh, last text I'll read. Text 17, to prove that the statement of his servant Prahlad Maharaj was substantial, in other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Lord Hari exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in, that, in the assembly hall. Purport. When Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? Is he present in this pillar? Prahlad Maharaj fearlessly replied, Yes, my Lord is present everywhere. Therefore, to convince Hiranyakashipu that the statement of Prahlad Maharaj was unmistakably true, the Lord appeared from the pillar. The Lord appeared as half lion and half man, so that Hiranyakashipu could not understand whether the great giant was a lion or human being. To substantiate Prahlad's statement, the Lord proved that his devotee, as declared in Bhagavad Gita, is never vanquished. Konteya pratijani hi name bhaktav pranashadi. Prahlad Maharaja's demoniac father had repeatedly threatened to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad was confident that he could not be killed, since he was protected by the Supreme Lord. By appearing from the pillar, the Lord encouraged his devotee, saying, in effect, Don't worry, I am present here. By manifesting his form as Nursimhadev, the Lord also preserved the truth of Lord Brahma's promise that Hiranyakashipu was not to be killed by any animal or any man. The Lord appeared in a form that could not be said to be fully a man or a lion. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha hmm. You know, actually I wanted to read the next text as well. Let me just read that because it's, it's related also. While Hiranyakashipu, this is text 18, while Hiranyakashipu looked all around to find the source of the sound, that wonderful form of the Lord, which could not be ascertained to be either a man or a lion, emerged from the pillar. In amazement, Hiranyakashipu wondered, what is this creature that is half man and half lion? Purport. A demon cannot calculate the unlimited potency of the Supreme Lord. As stated in the Vedas, prasya shaktir vividhaiva shruyate subhavaki jnana balakriyacha. The different potencies of the Lord are always working as an automatic exhibition of his knowledge. For a demon, it is certainly wonderful that the form of a lion and the form of a man can be united, since a demon has no experience of the inconceivable power for which the Supreme Lord is called all-powerful. Demons cannot understand the omnipotence of the Lord. They simply compare the Lord to one of them. Abhajanantima murha manushim tanamashritam. Murhas, rascals, think that Krishna is an ordinary human being who appears for the benefit of other human beings. Param bhava majanantaha. Fools, rascals, and demons cannot understand the supreme potency of the Lord, but he can do anything and everything. Indeed, he can do whatever he likes. When Hiranyakashipu received benedictions from Lord Brahma, he thought that he was safe. 
Since he received the benediction that he would not be killed either by an animal or by a human being, he never thought that an animal and human being would be combined so that demons like him would be puzzled by such a form. This is the meaning of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's omnipotence. So the next verses will describe... Um, the next, well, yeah, the next few verses, which Srila Prabhupada combines into kind of like one section, describe the transcendental form of Nirsimhadev, and then um, it'll be described the fight between the short um, fight between Hiranyakashipu and Nirsimhadev, and then eventually the bifurcation of Nirsimhadev, or of, sorry, of Hiranyakashipu. So, <clears throat> these few verses and purports are talking about uh, Hiranyakashipu's basically inability to grasp the reality of Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu's power. Srila Prabhupada in the first um, purport we read, he describes how demoniac people think that well, here, here's what he says. He says, demons always think that the god of the devotees is fictitious. They think that the religious feeling of devotion to that god is but an opiate. A kind of illusion like the illusions derived from LSD and opium. So this is a common, of course, Srila Prabhupada's uh, quoting here indirectly from Karl Marx, uh, who, said, who famously said that religion is the opium of the people. So <clears throat> this is a common uh, conception amongst people that, that, the, that God is fictitious, that God is uh, exaggerated, that he's just, like Srila Prabhupada says, another human being who appears for the benefit of other human beings. <clears throat> so how, would, how do we respond to that? We respond to that by saying... Um, that it's, well, of course, we, we, we don't accept that, that uh, religion or that devotion to God is, is like an opiate. Of course, they say that because, uh, because why? Because by practicing Krishna consciousness, by, or by practicing any kind of religious practice, by practicing devotion to God, it's an attempt to escape the miseries of material life. Um, we are escapists. We do think that material life and the sufferings within material life are worth escaping. Um, we don't think that that's a negative thing. Srila Prabhupada brings up the example that uh, if your house is on fire, what do you... I think Srila Prabhupada brings up this example, that, if, that, that if, if a house is on fire, what do you do? You get out. You don't say, okay, I'm going to face the fire. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in my room and I'm going to face the fire. And hey, fire is a part of just living in a house. So therefore, you know, let the fire come. I don't mind. No, the, the, the logical thing to do, the sane thing to do, is to leave. So in the same way, um, material life is miserable. Material life is full of so much anxiety and suffering. But that suffering is not necessary. There's nothing inherently good in that suffering. In the sense that it's nothing, we, we're, we are not of the opinion that you must experience suffering in order to experience good. Our, our, our view is actually that um, the suffering of material life is completely unnecessary and there is a way to get out of it. So if you have unnecessary suffering and a way out, why not take it? There's no, there's no in fact, not just why not take it, there is no sense in not taking it. To not take the way out is, is insanity. So, the religious feelings of devotion to God that the devotees feel are not just a kind of illusion because they can be proved. It's, it's, a, it's a logical, philosophical uh, position which, yes, just so happens to also free one from all suffering. So, what is the proof? Um, the proof is, one thing is, is the, the philosophy which is presented in the Vedas. That is proof uh, in as much as it gives the 
uh, logical or philosophical understanding by which we can understand um, that there is, in fact, a God. Beyond just the Vedas, and really if you look at what the Vedas are, are saying, really what they're saying is, is, is that the world, it's the existence of, of, of a world itself is proof enough that, that, that a God exists, that an intelligent, omnipotent, uh, omniscient creator exists. The world, just looking around, that's proof enough. Um, and that's, of course, a whole discussion that we could get into, but I'm not going to uh, be, just because it's not really all that relevant to this class. Uh, but the world itself is proof enough if you just look around. But largely, demons won't accept this. Demoniac people won't accept this. It's really a matter of um, people, people say, show me God, like Hirani Kashapu here is saying, show me God. You believe that, you're, that your, your Lord is, is present everywhere. You believe that he's like real and that he's going to protect you and everything. Well, show me. But even when the proof is right in front of them, still they don't accept it. It's not that, it's not that uh, there was a debate I heard between one uh, atheist and um, one Christian theologian named William Lane Craig, who's quite well known in the realm of um, theistic philosophy or theology. And this atheist was saying that, hey, you know, if, uh, if, if tomorrow I woke up and I saw in the sky that, you know, that there was, you know, a big giant towering figure. And he said, uh, I forgot his name, but he said, you know, his name. He said, such and such, I am your Lord. I've come now to, uh, to you know, establish myself, to establish that I'm real. And um, so now I, I, I declare that everybody should worship me. There should be no more doubt that I am God. Um, and then he said, you know, if I, if I woke up tomorrow and I saw that, then on next Sunday, I'd be in church with you. <laughs> and um, this William Lane Craig, he responded, he's saying, he said, no, you wouldn't. He said, he said, you know what you'd say? You'd say, man, honey, what'd you put in my coffee? You know, <laughs> he said, he said, this is some strong stuff, you know. So if somebody is decidedly averse to Krishna, decidedly averse to the concept that there is a God, then whatever proof you put in front of them, they won't accept it. If somebody is Vishnu Bahirmuka, averse, turn their head away from Lord Vishnu. Then just Chakshurvanayatadipam Drishtvadarpanamevacha, just like if you put a, a mirror or, and, and, a, and a lamp in front of a blind person, they won't be able to see. Similarly, even if Lord Vishnu is standing right in front of such a person, they won't be able to see him. They won't see him. So, Hiranyakashipu, and, and I'll say demoniac people in general have so much reason to believe. Hiranyakashipu here is saying, um, or actually, sorry, in the... In the previous verse. He says, O most fortunate Prahlad, you have always described a supreme being other than me. But where is he? People think that, that um, they must be the supreme being. They, can't, they, can't, they think, yes, I'm, I'm very much in control of my happiness and distress. I just have to do this and do that and I can arrange things and, you know, you are in charge of your own destiny, as people say, you know. The whole materialistic ethos is to get ahead by your own strength and however many people's heads you have to step on, you just get ahead. And <clears throat> as you develop your career and as you develop this and that and you get a family, then you'll be happy. It's all just a matter of, of arranging. And, and in America, we pride ourselves on having a, uh, what do you call it, um, social mobility it's not that it's not like the backwards Vedic system where you're uh, born into a family and you um, follow the occupation of that family or the occupation that or the, the training that you received when you were younger. No, we have social mobility that any uh, schmuck off the street can become the next president or whoever. 
So, um, but this idea, actually, time and time again, so many, even, even if you have somebody with a very successful life, so-called successful life, what happens at the end of it? They die. Not only do they die, but everybody they love will also die. And in 10 years, very few people will, for, will even remember their name, even their own children. And they, I think they say like just some months after a person dies, uh, you forget the sound of their voice. So people and, and the things in, in people's, you know, the body and the things in relation to the body are so ephemeral as to be basically just, for all practical purposes, completely false. But still, people think that, that there's nothing in the moment, you know. It seems so significant. It seems so um, real that people think that, yeah, I'm completely in control of everything. Everything, uh, this body and everything in relation to this body is completely real. It's completely substantial. And if, and if it doesn't work out, then it's the end. But we see... It never works out. It, it actually never, ever, not even once, did it ever work out. Even if it looks like it all works out. Still, it's temporary. It never, ever, ever, not for a second, works out. But still, people are so determined, people are so fixed in this idea that there is nothing higher, that there's no forces which are out of my control, even death. They think it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time and we'll conquer death. We're, we're on the, people now, the scientists nowadays are saying that we're on the brink of immortality. That we figure out the, you know, the different um, chemicals which degrade, you know, when cells divide and things like that. And that's aging. And if we just uh, figure out how to replace them and this and that, then we're, immort then we're here, immortality. But um, even then, even let's even say that they discover biological immortality. Let's say that they figured out all the chemicals in this, like, and, you know, whatever. Still, you can get hit by a bus. You can, you know, whatever, slip in the bathtub and hit your head and all these different things. So many uh, ways that people can die, not just age. Yeah, exactly. Adi Daivik. But still, even, even despite these adidaivic miseries, still, people can't see. Like Hiranyakashipu, this, this, you know, big, big, tumultuous sound. And, uh, you know, he, he cracked the pillar and this big, big, tumultuous sound which resounds throughout the universe. And he's thinking, well, that's a little odd, you know. That's, you know, what's going on here, you know. And so then, and then he sees Nursimhadev face to face and he goes, well, that's very interesting. I wonder what sort of creature that is, you know? Prahlad Maharaj is saying, yes, my Lord is in that pillar. If you hit that pillar, my Lord will come. Basically, he said that. Yeah, and then he said, yeah. And then he said, and then he said, all right, let me see him. Is he in this pillar? And then he, and then he strikes the pillar, this big sound, and this fierce creature comes out. And he goes, hmm, I wonder who that is, you know? Because his, his, his intelligence is just completely covered over. But we'll see that although demons don't acknowledge, and in fact, because demons don't acknowledge the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and, and their own fallibility, then how does Krishna approach them? Mrityu sarva He comes as death to take everything away. So similarly, Hiranyakashipu, and I should say that also, um, when death comes, they become very fearful. They think, oh, death, that's just, you know, that's way down the line. It's not going to happen. Or, and, um, or at least they live that way. They might acknowledge, yeah, anyway, we're all going to die, but it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it. But then when death comes, then it's serious. Then it's real. So in, a, in, in the same way, Hiranyakashipu, he's thinking, ah, oh, Lord Vishnu, uh, you know, Prahlad Maharaj, he's like, you know, my son Prahlad, he's just a, he's just a kid, you know, he's like a little, you know, whatever, caught up in this Vishnu thing. But anyway, whatever. Um, Vishnu, you know, let him come. I'll, I'll, I'll cut his head off or whatever. 
you know. And then Vishnu comes and he's like, ooh. And he's, he's, he's surprised. He's surprised that, you know, he's, he's, he's aghast. He can't, he, can't under, he can't understand. He can't process the, the power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now Krishna's come and it's like, ooh, okay, what's going on here? Because the prevailing idea is that, okay, even if there is a God, he's just, um, he's just another one of us and he appears just for us. Like Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, they think that, he's, that God is just another human being who appears for the benefit of other human beings. But he's not. He's not just another human being. But because people think like that, uh, they're very quick to just discard the idea of God. I had one friend growing up, uh, when, I, when I started coming to Krishna consciousness, I started speaking with her more about um, God and this like that. And she's like, yeah, I believe in God, but like honestly, it doesn't really have an effect on my life, you know. Yeah, I, I believe in God like as a philosophical position, but it's like, you know, it's not much else, you know. But param bhava madanantaha. They don't know. They just, they don't know Krishna's supreme position. They don't know Krishna's, they, they can't comprehend they, they, can't, they can't comprehend the fact that Krishna has so many energies. Krishna has the ability to do anything. Even I was speaking with one Christian one time on book distribution. I've made that mistake before. Um, and he was saying, you know, can... Um, let, me, let me ask you, so you say God's all-powerful. Can God put something between a rock and a hard place? And I said, absolutely he can, you know. God, and he said, well, how is that possible? That's not very logical. And I said, well, God created logic. You know, he can do anything. He can bend any, any rule he wants. It's not in a way that we can understand. But yeah, he, theoretically, he could do it if he wanted to, you know. So even, even, even so-called religionists, so-called spiritualists, they have this idea that God is subject to some kind of laws. God's subject to some kind of rules and regulations. How could God appear as half man, half lion? How would that look? What's the anatomy of that, this and that, you know? Materialistic people ask such questions. Of course, we should also be able to answer their questions. Um, but Hiranyakashipu is in over his head. He, 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 he did not properly... Uh, Calculate his actions. He did not properly um, calculate what you know his. Uh, he got more than he bargained for. That's the that's what I'm looking for. He got more than he bargained for. Now, of course, he's going to see Lord Vishnu. He's going to study the form of Lord Narasimhadev. He's going to see the. Uh, he sa the next verse says, "Hiranyakashipu studied the form of the Lord, trying to decide who the form of Narasimhadev standing before him was." You know, and he's going to see the the razor sharp tongue of Nursimhadev, the claws, the um, the the weapons, the contrail disc and club. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. The angry eyes, which resembled molten gold, his shining mane, all these different things. But um, but still, and then in the next verse, he's going to say, "Lord Vishnu, who possesses great mystic power, has made this plan to kill me. But what is the use of such an attempt? Who can fight with me?" You know, still he sees Lord Vishnu right in front of the, the awe inspiring form of Lord Narsimhadev present before, before him. And he says, anyway, who can, who can, who can kill me anyway? He said, let, let, let this, let this chump try something. But, um, of course it doesn't turn out well for Narsimhadev or sorry for uh, Hiranyakashipu. And uh, we'll see that in the coming verses. That, <clears throat> and it's 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 indicative or um, reflective of the of the atheistic mentality that I'm in control of my happiness. I'm in control of my suffering. I can suffer as much as I want, and I can be happy as much as I want. It's all just a matter of adjusting things and this and that. Um, and so there's all this talk, all this talk, 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 on and on and on about, about how um, I'll become, we'll become happy in this life and we'll, we'll arrange everything and, 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 and the world will become happy and peaceful and this and that. So much talk, but it never amounts to anything. 
It has never amounted to anything. It will never amount to anything. Because there's, there is a, a, a flaw on the, on the most fundamental level to think that I am fully in control, that material nature is, is, is um, what I make of it. Because their philosophy is flawed at the most fundamental level, uh, it, it won't work out. It's, it's impossible. But, but still, to the last second, they, 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 they keep it. Even, even, when, even when, when they're knocking at death's door, or I should say maybe death's knocking at their door, still they, they maintain this, you know, I think... Uh, Anyway, who brings up the... Oh, no, no. I think Srila Prabhupada brings up the example of the... Their... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are two, guy, two guys arguing over... What, is, what are they arguing over again? Something like that, like scissors or a knife. Right? Yeah, okay. So they're arguing over like whether to cut something with like scissors or a knife or something like that. I forgot. Anyway, then one of them... I don't know. I forget the story now. Anyway, the one... Yeah, he like... Th- Three. Yeah, he throws the guy overboard and the guy's drowning. And as he's drowning, he's going like this, you know. So to the last, just so fixated on some stupid, you know, thing, you know, the whole and and, st- and it's exactly like materialistic life. They just got some stupid thing in their head until the end, even though the whole thing has fallen apart. The body's fallen apart. Uh, the, everything, you know, they they can't enjoy anything that they that the, you know they spent their life enjoying. So the whole thing fell apart. But still, to the last second, like this. So sim- similarly with Hiranyakashipu here. I mean, Nursimadev. I mean, Nursimadev is 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 a is a fearful personality, or sorry, a, a frightful, fearsome. fearsome personality. It's not that not that uh, you know Lord Vishnu came with his just you know in his forearmed form with his conch and disc, and he's looking very beautiful with his garland. He's looking very gentle. No, it's not like that at all. Even the demigods, even the demigods were thinking that the sound was so tumultuous that the demigods thought their planets were being destroyed. You can think what kind of a sound that is, you know. We hear thunder and, it, and like Srila Prabhupada brings up, sometimes you become afraid that our house will be destroyed or something like that. Imagine, imagine a sound that convinced you that, you're, that the entire planet was being destroyed. That's, yeah, time to chant Hare Krishna. But still, Nursimadev, he's got this stupid thing in his head that I'm all powerful, that I can defeat Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is just another one of us. So, in, so still he hears this giant tumultuous sound. He sees this fearsome personality appear out of this pillar. And still he's thinking, who can fight with me? Who has the power? He said, Lord Vishnu, you, he's, he's made this plan to kill me. It's like, to hell with him, you know. But um, we'll see. That that Hiranyakashipu is is proved wrong beyond any reasonable doubt when his body is bifurcated by the nails of Lord Narsimhadev. Tavakara Kamala Nike Tavakara Kamala Tavakara Kamala Vare Nakamad Buta Shringam Dalita Hiranyakashipu Tanubringham that with his lotus hands which have wonderfully sharp uh, nails on them, he, he bifurcated Hiranyakashipu, split him in half, cut him open, and wore his garlands as, an, or, sorry, wore his uh, intestines as a garland, such as the fearsome nature of Lord Nursimhadev. So I'll stop there if there's any comments or questions. Hmm. So one of the the uh, things you started with the the opium of the people, mm-hmm. and uh, I like to point out sometimes that I was raised as a communist Orthodox, and that was one of the things I remembered. One of the other things I remembered is, is when I became a devotee, was that the, one of the mottos, Marx's mottos, was from each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs. Well, you know, you probably raised that. I guess by the time you grew up within communism. And I said, well, that's a, that's a great ideal. But it doesn't work. 
Putin is one of the most corrupt leaders that's ever been in the, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and because the temptation is too great. You know, inevitably, somebody's rising up and he's doing the management and says, oh, you know, that, I, no, let me get rich. So, so the, the thing that I, uh, because it's, you know, it's well known, and Prabhupada confronted that when he wanted to go to Russia and he saw, you know, the, uh, during the Soviet era, that uh, they were seriously outlawing displays of religion. You know, there's no question of doing Harinam in the street at that time. And, and it's, it, because it's a challenge to the authority. That's the big thing. You know, I have people going to church and recognizing another authority besides, you know, the president, the leader. And so that's what freaks them out, you know. And uh, so, you know, Prabhupada, Prabhupada he, <laughs> in like a needle out like a plow, he, in, he initiated one devotee, right? Famous devotee was Ananta Shanti. And Ananta Shanti became fearless, just like Vlad. He was distributing, right? Yeah, he also went, they arrested him. I, yeah. Yeah. What is that? Ten years. Ten years till they finally noticed. <laughs> so, so it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's a wonderful thing how Prabhupada showed that Krishna consciousness is so strong, and 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 Krishna is so uh, eager to help his devotees that even in a in a repressive society like that, Krishna consciousness could spread, and in China also. Um, thank you for the class. Um, you mentioned um, uh, that um, this mentality of uh, demons, and uh, I remembered the um, story of Sakshi Gopal. It's very nice, uh, how to say, example, and um, that it's not only in this age; it's all time in this material world. Is this mentality of demons so strong and you know, how to say so no, exists uh, all time mm -hmm. and also uh, we can see that uh, this is in our life because of even we practice but um, how to say inside uh, this uh, mentality that I am Lord I am Lord of this, maybe not all world, but some <laughs> small piece, but I am Lord. <laughs> it's yeah. so deep. Uh, okay. uh, when you were speaking about Timotheus sound, I remember a story of uh, Srila Radnath Maharaj. She was, I don't remember where exactly, <clears throat> but in some village, and there was an earthquake, and everyone just bowed down, praying to God. <laughs> God, please stop this, th stop this earthquake. But uh, Radna Swain was praying, please never stop this, because they finally bow bowing down to God. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. That's good. I just had a question about, you were talking about how when Lord Nishun Dave came out and he made this tremotary sound, the demigods, and it said, even Lord Brahma was had was fearful, but my question is, why? Because he could, if he is, it said in the second canto he could see past, present, and future, so couldn't he like be able to see that coming? In a sense, hmm. Lord Brahma can see past, present, and future. That's what it says. Yeah. It's, uh, hmm. Interesting. It said right here. Actually, I read it yesterday. That's why. Uh, seven chapter text thirty three. And he was talking to, um, yeah, so we should carefully note that the statement described here in the statement by Brahmanji to Narada was speaking, was speaking to Narada events what happened past in the future during the advent of Lord Krishna. And it says, and it continues, because he could see past, present, and future. It says that, that he can see past, present, and future? Yeah, because it said, one being, what's it, being one of them foretold what happened in the future. And then, Past times, Lord Krishna exactly would be able to see past, present, and future. What does it say? Can I, can I? Yeah. Look in the middle. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> the past times of the Lord are known to the experts who are able to see past, present, and future, and Brahmaji being one of them foretold what would happen in the future. 
Now, this doesn't strike me as 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 the fact that he knows like everything past, present, and future, and therefore he can like, uh, you know, like like the same way Krishna can see past, present, and future. I don't think it's exactly the same as that. Um, Brahma Brahma's made of intelligence, so uh, I assume this this uh, this comes down to basically his ability to reason, um, in in terms of seeing the future at least. I mean, sure, surely some things he can he can he's able to foretell, but. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I don't think this is referring to Lord Brahma just being able to see everything in the future and therefore he sees the passives of Lord happening in the future. Um, I think this is my uh, this is specifically referring to I think um, the fact that Lord Brahma is a devotee of Krishna and he has a specific role um, also as as actually one of the acharyas of the four Vaishnava Sampradayas and. Um, Therefore, certain things are revealed to him. That's my understanding of this. Um, but um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, Lord Brahma, he's not he's not omnip or omniscient like like Krishna is. So um, he became fearful because um, this is kind of an unprecedented form of the Lord. Yeah. Think ahead, you know. What, you know that when uh, all is done, and Rundikashipu, uh, 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 Shungadeva is killed, Rundikashipu, and so many soldiers, and blood is everywhere, and he's still roaring. Yeah. Brahma is one of the one of those who was going to try to pacify him with prayers, but he was afraid because it was unprecedented form, and he he may have known. Well, I, I can go and, and, and pray to him, and he's not going to tear me apart. But the visceral reaction, you know, is it horrendous? You have, you have all these, all the blood and everything, and he's roaring. And I mean, just when you when you see, you know, the face of like Mayapur and the Shringa Dave, it's telling you, it's startled, you know, just the uh, <laughs> expression. So I think it's more like a visceral reaction, and you, and it's it expressed very dramatically after the whole thing. And he's still angry, and they they they're afraid. All the demigods, even Lakshmi, is afraid to go there. So that, you know, he could have just seen, well, I know it's okay, I can go because I can see the future. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's beyond that. It's like, who is he? You know, we know it's him before. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think Lord Brahma's and others' ability to see past, present, or future is like, um, I, I think they're able to foretell certain things and, like, and see certain things in the past, like, like, uh, Past, present, and future. Like even, even uh, what do you call it? Like even Sanjaya, Sanjaya in the Mahabharata, he had the ability to to see what was going on in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, even though he was somewhere somewhere else. So certain people have mystic abilities like that, and also people have the ability to see the past. Certain sages can see, or certain things are revealed to them according to their qualification. Similarly, in the future. Um, but yeah, I I don't think it's the kind of full omniscience like like Krishna has that he can see everything in the past, pre everything in the future, everything in the present. Um, at least that's my yeah. understanding. So, yes. Uh, for this uh, question, no, maybe second part of question that um, the situation that Brahma, uh, how to say, build, was fear of. Um, to how to specify a lot in Simhadev. I heard that um, it's, a, it's a subject that, um, how to say, Prahlad was pure devotee and he was very, he was so pure that he uh, can recognize Krishna in, in different forms. But um, Brahma, not possible. No, this is like mixed devotee. And even, even Lakshmi also, she uh, said that, oh, I, I, did, I didn't see my Lord in this form, never. So this is like a little, not purity. It's like, like gradation. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada describes that a dog recognizes his owner whether he's wearing a business suit or shorts or whatever he's wearing, a dog can always recognize his owner. So in a similar way, a devotee can always recognize the Supreme Personality of God no matter what form he takes. Adbhuta Shringam. Adbhuta Shringam. I, I naturally thought, like you, I think that uh, wonderfully sharp, amazingly sharp. And I think 
it can be understood that way. But I saw a commentary, I think it was Vishnu Chakravarti, somebody, uh, and they were saying the, what's amazing about it is he's got those lotus hands mm -hmm. with the with the, the nails. In other words, it's like these two inco incompatible things. You know, he's got these wonderfully sharp nails that it's actually his lotus hands. You know? mm -hmm. And he shows that, you know, when Pallad comes and he just comes completely comala, you know, and he plays his hand and Pallad is completely unafraid of the nails, you know, just put the hand on. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai.